ASRScoach.com, the best of cataract coach course from the ASRS in Boston 2024. All right, brunette and cataract. Dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> All right, here you go. This is a pretty brunette and cataract. This Ooh. is a Beverly Hills patient. So this is a tripan. We'll stay in that. And what is your approach to these? You get a lot of these out in Pittsburgh. Lots of brunette and cataracts. Oh, yeah. So what, one pearl for putting tripan in is I decompress, so let some aqueous out before you put the tripan. So you get a nice, intense stain. Ah, there you go. Another way for an intense stain is I just leave the dye on there longer. Uh, but you know, if you leave it on too long, the capsule gets very fragile. Gets more, that's a good point. So you have to the be careful. The dye makes it brittle. Yeah, You're so, right. So you, there's a I, I do it spot. totally different. How do you do it? I use a little layer of viscoelastic to coat the cornea, and then I paint the capsule. Paint the capsule. So ah. that you don't stain the corneal endothelial cells. So I do that in cases w where I'm worried about the endothelium, like in Fuchs cases yeah. or zonular issues. Right, because you don't want, if you back, ever get tripan going back, you, you have your, oh, no yeah. red reflex. Yeah, you lose your red reflex. So how are you going to divide up this very brunescent cataract? Divine conquer, stop and chop, some variant of chop, femto, lens loop, lens snare, pull out of the bag, crack close to your plate. I love stop and chop. That's my go-to case. But even when you have that, that posterior plate that doesn't want to split? So, so then you can use a lens loop or a lens snare. Those, those work great for that. There's so many different techniques. So what would you um, do in this case? Stop and chop? Yeah, I would start with the stop and chop because you don't really know until you know. Right. So I actually described a technique and it's in the JCRS. It's called pocket chop. And I do almost like a half pocket or a half groove. And then I have, I have no financial interest in it, but I have a Bragg and Mealy chopper that is a tomahawk sharp chopper for these. And I only keep it in the eye for as long as I have to because it is daunting sometimes, even in my hands. And then I chop this and the key is you cut it, you have a good grip, you pull up and you chop and you make sure you do not move until you get that posterior plate split. Mm. If the posterior plate splits and you get flower pieces, I love flowers, right? You have flower pieces, you can do a reverse karate chop. And when you have that piece, you bring your chopper behind it and then karate chop towards nice. you and split it. Well, you're not going to like me because I'm not going to follow any of your, your advice. Sorry. Are you bringing it into the back? Well, let's see what scene. I'm going to do here. Oh. I got a nice juicy Rexus, a big five and a half plus Rexus. Which is what you have to do for these. Guys. Yes. Yes. No baby Rexus. So the denser the lens, the wider the grooves. That's yeah. what I always say. Okay. If you're going to do a you know, divide and conquer or a stop and chop. So how about this technique? Oh my God, you're crazy. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, If you were my painful. resident, my that's coronary so arteries would have died oh, already. God. I don't know how you did it. You know, um, <laughs> set them up for the DMEC now. Just <laughs> schedule it. Just do it. This is ridiculous. Uh -oh. <laughs> but look, I'll be able to get that posterior plate now. Look. Yeah. Look, I don't even have to do cardio today because my heart rate is up. Just watching you do surgery. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna buzz in here. I'm gonna look at that. Look. Uh, look, I can bench 225. I still have that much effort to crack this thing. God, tell me, divide and conquer, stop and chop would have worked there. It's not gonna work. It would. You didn't try it. <laughs> well, It'll work. We do this all the time. You know <laughs> that. Are you? Did you recoat the cornea with viscoelastic? No. Uh, next year I'm doing different panels. <laughs> <laughs> You want to bake in the bag as much as possible these, for these yeah. really dense cataracts. It's not how much energy you use, it's where you I'm use it in the down. eye. I'm no. down. So, you know, the more you're in the bag, that's better in terms of the uh, effect on the corneal endothelium. Boom, just like that. Now it's time to polish the capsule. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so get it, get it all cleaned up here. This time I will not polish the capsule. I will just, well, I want to get that floater there. So we'll get the lens in, and, and you, you know one of my tricks here now is I'll put some triamcinolone in the AC, some preservative-free triamcinolone. We just make this ourselves with the uh, with brand name Kenalog. So if you want to take the nucleus that whole, what are you going to do? A traditional extra cap? You're just going to enlarge the corneal phacal incision, push it to the vitreous, refer to the VR colleague, or you're going to learn to perform M6 because you watch cataractcoach.com. Dum dum. What are you going to do? <laughs> do you guys still do manual ECCE? Or do you, if you switch over to M6? We switch, I mean, switch over to M6. Absolutely. Yeah. It's such an elegant technique. This is another thing that we all should have in our toolbox yeah. for, for cases that are more dense than this. 
that you really cannot fakeo through. Right. Um, it's it's an elegant technique, and it you know brings back all the you know the key there is just doing a beautiful scleral tunnel and making sure that that's a really wide tunnel. It, it works beautifully. I, I remember back when I was a resident, they taught me ECCE with these corneoscleral scissors to the left and to the right. That was barbaric. <laughs> Absolutely. No, so ECCE, I think, is the old style was terrible compared to M6. <laughs> M6 really is a really beautiful technique. Yeah. It is not difficult to learn. And I've got a few simple pearls to make it easy for you. But I think it's important in the U.S., around the world, surgeons all perform M6 mm -hmm. all the time. But in the U.S., I think we really don't do it nearly enough. And a lot of re training programs for residents don't teach it at all. So I think it, for me, it's important to teach it. So I'll show you how I do it. I, even in Beverly Hills, a couple times a year, I'll use this technique. It just makes life so much easier, so much less stress and a better outcome. So here are my four simple pearls. And I, I do kind of like got some cheat codes here, which I'll share with you. And the first thing is what you said was make a great incision. Yeah. Yeah. So the incisions, I'm sitting superiorly here, do a pyridomy. The incision has to be shelved. And that's the key here. So we're not gonna go right up at the limbus here. You wanna go a little bit further back. And this incision we're gonna make with a, a crescent blade about half scleral depth. Now you can do a straight line here. Some people do a frown. But the key is that it's gonna be trapezoidal. So wider on the inside than the outside. And then look mm -hmm. at the tunnel length. It's a lot longer tunnel length than you imagine. You can see this is a pretty brunescent cavity, pretty dense. This patient also happens to have a lot of sill, two drops of sill with the rule. So I'm thinking, perfect. So we'll get this done, and the, there's the incision. Again, it's half scleral depth, and I haven't ended the AC yet, so now this is still within the cornea, and you can see how it's that trapezoidal shape, wider on the inside than on the outside. When in doubt, make it a little bit wider. Now I'll get the tripen blue dye out. I also make an opposite paracentesis, and I'll show you why and how I use that. So here's the viscoelastic going in. At this point now, I can make our rexus, make the um, end of the eye here, so end of that scleral tunnel wiggle the blade back and forth so I'm not catching any lip of it. And now through the regular small incision, make a generous rectus. You had an important pearl, which is the denser the nucleus, the, the wider the rectus. Yep. And I think that's a very important thing. So I have four steps there that are marked off at two and a half and five millimeters. And what looks like a monstrously huge rectus is gonna be just about perfect. So it looks huge, but it's actually going to be great. And it's going to overlap the optic, a six millimeter optic. Yep. And so here, a little bit of hydrodissection. You don't really see the fluid waste because the nucleus is so dense. And then uh, we'll get that up. I'm really get it up out of the bag and get it above the iris. Make your life easy. So make sure that lens is dialed up above the iris 360. And then recoating with viscoelastic. Thank you. Thanks. There. <laughs> Well, Martin's right here. He'll teach, you how to, he'll teach me how to do a DMAX. So, <laughs> so more, more dispersive there above it and beneath it. And then again, my cheat code here is once we open up the incision, make sure you open it sufficiently wide. You don't want to yeah. struggle with this. That's one of the things that I did at the beginning was struggling. Now put more viscoelastic. And now I'll just use the spatula here to push it out. That's great. Don't lift the lens nucleus up towards the endothelium ever. Because then you'll scrape the endothelium. So instead of here, I'll just push it out. I'm staying, all force factors are parallel to the, to the iris plane. So I'll just push it out of the eye here. Push, 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 like delivering a big baby. And there, <laughs> there it is. Beauty. That would have been a lot of phaco powder. And now another thing is I like to suture the incision. When it's yeah. taught in other countries, M6 is done sutureless, believe it or not. Because the inc incisions are so well constructed. So I'm not as much of an expert at M6 because I don't do a thousand of them a year. I just do a few. And so here we'll suture up the incision and I'll just put in two 10 nylons interrupted. And I think that's gonna give me a really nice apposition of the tissues. Plus then I can still go inside here with my coaxial stuff yep. and aspirate out the cortex. I can also put the lens in between these two sutures because that's at least three millimeters between the two. And I think it's just a nice way of doing it. So I do, I do like to still put sutures in these. You can do M6 superior as well as um, la uh, temporally. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I think I like to do superior because the patient has two dabs with the little sill. So here, generally for M6, people like to do the bimanual IA only so you don't get that iris prolapse you see right there. But that comes, the, the cortex comes out pretty easily and then you'll see we'll get the lens in and we'll call it a day. So those are my pearls for M6. You got any pearls to, to let us know? Uh, I like an irrigating vectus to remove the nucleus. Oh, nice. So you don't have to push it out. Really, you're just depressing the wound. And, Floating and, it out. And it'll just come out. So you depress the main wound. That's the key. 
So you never lift up and use the endothelium as a second instrument. You just depress the wound and it'll just kind of and uh, instead irrigate instead out. Instead of a spatula to push it out, which I thought was great. So if you don't have an irrigating vect vectus, you might, you can't get one. Um, you can also use your, your dispersive viscoelastic. Yes. Screw that other one and kind of push it out right. with the dispersive viscoelastic. The other thing is if you don't want to put nylon, you can put um, Vicryl. Vicryl sutures and then they'll dissolve after nice. a while. And then if you get a good bleb, you can build for a trap. So it's all good. <laughs> How many people are doing M6? Awesome. So if, you're, if you didn't raise your hand, you better learn it. It's not that hard, I promise. Any other questions from the audience? Uh, yes? What do you do if you have a uh, Flomax patient, same dense cataract, um, pupil doesn't dilate, you have a huge dilate. Right, so if you have a Flomax case, you want to do M6, you can also do it, obviously. Hooks. I think hooks is probably your easiest option there to really expose it. But what I do instead is, I just, you see my videos, I rarely use hooks or, or a ring. 